Yo, what up, a-holes? Thank you for tuning into the Holistic A-Hole Podcast. My name is Eric Levi, and I'm the Holistic A-Hole. How the heck are you doing today out there in good old A-Hole land? I am doing great. Just got back from a nice little yoga class here after finishing another intermittent fast. Uh, In the last three days, I've done two intermittent fasts and one 24-hour fast. And uh, from the biology of my own body, from the evidence of the data compiled, I'll tell you, feeling pretty freaking good right now. Because that's what happens when you just don't listen to those so-called experts and decide to take health into your own hands and by golly, just make some good old-fashioned good feelings. And that's what we're here to do. If you're a new listener to the Holistic A-Hole Podcast, well, thank you for finding us however you found us. Appreciate you stopping in. You're in for a wild ride because here in the Holistic A-Hole Podcast, we don't, as they say, fuck around. So if you are new, do a huge favor, me a huge favor, and yourself a huge favor. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, uh, and that would be by hitting the button there in your podcast player, however you're listening to this. And then uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to catch me on all the social mediums, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, not Snapchat. I just deleted Snapchat off the phone today, actually, uh, just a couple hours ago, because, man, sometimes you got to cut the loose bait, you know? Uh, I I enjoy a good old snap, a good old snappity doo da, but uh, man, it's just taking up fucking room on my phone where I have to save that room for very special pictures of nonsense to put on my Instagram, and I'm not snapping that shit. What a waste of time. Gary Vaynerchuk really, really missed the mark when he predicted Snapchat was going to blow up. Uh, and by blow up, I mean self-destruct and just for the most part, get the fuck off my phone. But, uh, yeah, find me on the social mediums, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, under the name Holistic A-Hole, um, at Holistic A-Hole on Twitter, at Holistic A-Hole on Instagram, and then just Holistic A-Hole on Facebook. And if you enjoy, you know, what you're hearing today, go on to iTunes, leave a five-star review because that's how shit works with podcasts. So, uh, what are we talking about today? We're talking about diet soda. And um, this is something that just drives me crazy, you know? Like, the, the idea of diet soda. And let me say this. It's not just diet soda that's a problem. It's, you know, uh, low-calorie drinks, you know, low-fat drinks, low sugar drinks, any of these, any fruit juices, especially, those are the most fucking deceiving. Maybe we'll do an episode just about just the deception of fruit juice. Um, But uh, like the naked juices (coughs) and apple juice, oh my God, apple juice, orange juice, this shit is just straight up poison and sugar and you know me like i'm okay with a little bit of sugar but bro these fucking juices are just so loaded with sugar and artificial sweeteners especially and that's what we're going to talk about a lot today because this is what diet soda is specifically we'll talk about diet coke you know you can take what i'm going to say here and apply it Across the spectrum, whether it's Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, Diet Mountain Dew, Diet Sprite, you know, Diet Dr. Pepper, whatever it is, the shit is fucking toxic. And it really just makes your body not work right, you know, like not work right to a point of being detrimental, you know, like everything in our society Everything in our modern world, especially if you live in a place like New York, New York City, I mean, you're just surrounded by carcinogens. You're just surrounded by little molecules that want to fucking kill you. But, you know, Diet Coke is so bothersome to me because because basically what it is is just straight up deception. That's what it is. 
it it really is. God, I hate to fucking pull out the social justice warrior hidden deep down inside my holistic soul, but man, diet soda really is rape. It really is raping you. It's giving you this false promise of being good for you. It's luring you in by saying like, hey, fat boy, tired of feeling worthless and shitty and not getting dates and people looking at you and pointing at you like, look at that fat fuck. Well, drink a Diet Coke and get on a bike and just ride across the country because that's how much energy you're going to have after you lose all the weight that's going to come by drinking diet soda. Does anybody... Does anybody still believe this, by the way? Does anybody still believe that diet soda is actually in any way doing some kind of good for you? I, 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 will, I will admittedly say that I don't think that people believe that Diet Coke is good for them. However, what I do think is happening, and this is coming from, you know, someone who's been not a fat fuck, but definitely, uh, you know, in a, a slightly overweight fuck and somebody who has, you know, grown, grown up in America around, you know, uh, corporate culture and around, uh, you know, consumerism and capitalism. And, uh, you know, as a consumer, there really is that part of your, that part of your brain that just kind of like justifies being bullshitted to you know what i mean like there's that part of you that just wants to believe that the powers that be and be that as they may as they may oh may day uh you really want to believe that they're not out to hurt you and you know i would assume like in a company like coca-cola for instance there's tens of thousands of people that work for coca-cola um, I would say probably the ma vast majority of those people, no matter what job they have there, which is, you know, all the way up from the president and CEO of the company down to the guy who fucking cleans the floors, um, I would say most of them are not out to hurt people who drink the soda. Um, however, uh, there's definitely the people in that company who are sitting on you know, fucking, what, a hundred years of profits. And they're saying, look, we can't tell people the truth about this because if people find out the truth about Coke, um, and especially, you know, Diet Coke, uh, they're not going to want to drink our shit anymore. And uh, they're going to be very mad. And there's going to be a lot of people who are either dying or have diabetes or, you know, have lost people to diabetes and cancer who are going to be kind of upset and uh, they, they might come and try to sue us because we blatantly deceived them and their loved ones. And um, that could be pretty uh, catastrophic for our company. So let's just keep going as business as usual and um, let's just pretend like everything we're doing is just fine. <laughs> and uh, that's basically the, the corporate culture of, I mean, not just Coke, but, I mean, you're talking about probably paint companies or any, any company that deals with chemicals. Any company that is providing a consumable, you know, uh, like a physical fucking product or something that can be eaten or drank, you know, fucking hostess, you know, I don't think they're out to kill people with little Debbies and snowballs. You ever seen a snowball? <laughs> you ever seen a snowball? Snowballs come in different colors. Snowballs come in green and blue. I've seen green and blue snowballs. Um, I don't think uh, there's much natural, uh, anything natural or wholesome coming out of that. Uh, I would even go as far as to say it's probably the chemicals that are making the snowballs. Those colors are probably going to kill you. Um, but at the same time, I don't think the people at Hostess are really like, yeah, we're trying to kill people. I just think it's, you know, a whole corporation of people who are trying to make money to, to, to feed their families and, and retire on. And, uh, you know, if, if Hostess or whoever makes that shit, Sarah Lee or whatever the companies are, you know, who make this stuff, 
came out and were like, oh, you know, you want to hear some crazy shit? Uh, you won't believe how toxic the foods that we sell are. Like, they are really toxic. They're, they're just not going to come out and, uh, and say that. So what happens to us on Main Street is that, um, you know, we just sit there with this, like, with this same kind of... Where we're like, in fact, I'm just going to say that, um, you know, if I'm drinking something that says Diet Coke, then it's got to be good for me. It's got to be good. I, I don't know if anybody consciously says this out loud or anything, but um, it's definitely the thing that's, that's kind of playing back in the back of your mind when you, uh, when you, you know, when you, when you choose to drink something like Diet Coke, you know? There's a whole network of information happening to make that decision and to, to justify drinking something like Diet Coke, you know? Just the word diet, you're like, well, it can't be, it's got to be better than a regular Coke at the very least. And, you know, what, what am I going to, if I can't drink Coke, then, oh my God, what am I going to drink? Am I going to drink fucking, what, water? Ugh. I'd imagine that's what most people who are drinking Diet Coke are saying because I just don't know how you can drink Diet Coke in 2018. In 2018, dude. It's it's not 1958. It's not 1968. It's not 1988. It's not even 2008. It's 2018, bro. There's fucking so many videos on YouTube you can watch about this. There's so many articles on the internet you can read about this. You can go on a fucking PubMed and find studies where they studied the ingredients of Diet Coke and see the legit damage that it does to people. This one was my favorite in researching um, this episode. Uh, there was a, a study where um, the scientists wanted to study the effects of aspartame on the brain of people who have a history of depression because they were like, well, you know, they had this hypothesis that maybe, you know, aspartame, which I don't know if I just said this, uh, is like the sweetener in Diet Coke. It's what makes Diet Coke um, taste like you just put your mouth into a fucking pile of dirt and started gulping it quickly. Um because it's natural, uh, what is it? Nat is it natural sweeteners? Uh, artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners, any artificial sweetener, even the stuff that's not bad for you. Stevia, it's terrible, bro. It, it's so gross. Um, but, you know, they had this hypothesis that uh, aspartame uh, induced, you know, depression or gave was connected to suicidal thoughts, Um so they, they put this test together where they took 40 participants who had, you know, some degree of a history of, uh, of, uh, of depression, and they wanted to do, I don't know, like a couple weeks of just them drinking, you know, diet soda or consuming aspartame in some way. And they had to stop the study halfway through. They had to stop it halfway through because... They were giving these people, uh, because these people were starting to exhibit extreme signs of depression, like extreme depression, like suicidal thoughts. It got to the point where they had to stop it because the study had become unethical. Do you know, do you know how fucking crazy that is to have a study that's deemed unethical so it has to be stopped? I mean, science is brutal, and they do everything they can to not be considered unethical. When they do cross that line into unethical, that means there's some really bad shit going on. And uh, they were giving these people fucking aspartame, and apparently these people were starting to talk about killing themselves. They were just in just severe depression. And here's the craziest thing of the whole thing. Uh, they were only giving people half of the daily amount that was set by the FDA, half the allowable daily amount. 
set by the FDA. That's how much aspartame these people were taking in. The uh, daily allowable amount set by the FDA is 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. These study participants were getting 25 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, which means aspartame is fucking poison to your brain. Aspartame induces depression. It makes you sad. In some people, it makes you think about killing yourself. So, uh, yeah, that's what you're getting out of a cool, crisp can of Diet Coke. And why are you drinking Diet Coke to begin with? Are you drinking it because, because you are like, I want to, you're thinking like, I want to lose weight, you know? Or I don't think people are drinking Diet Coke because they're like, I want to lose weight. I think most Diet Coke is drunk as an offset to some other terrible shit that you're eating. I think this is the real danger of Diet Coke. I mean, the depression thing, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, but you have to, like, measure that. I think in the case of what Diet Coke is really used for, which is like, you know, most Diet Cokes are drank when somebody's eating a cheeseburger, when somebody's eating, uh, you know, like a big fat Chipotle burrito, you know, or when you're, you know, uh, you're eating a big plate of nachos or ribs or whatever the hell it is, you know. Um, you try to offset it by drinking a Diet Coke. It's so cliche. It's so cliche. And it's so easy to observe, but it's so true that people still do this. One of my favorite all-time, like, bits in comedy, I, I'm pretty sure it was G Greg Giraldo, but it was something to that effect of, like, you know, yeah, you're, you're drinking a Diet Coke while you're eating a fucking cheeseburger, you know? I don't know. that I, I can't tell you the bit off the top of my head. It's out there somewhere on the internet. But um, it's so cliche and it's so true. I see it happen all the time, dude. You know, why do you think they have Diet Coke in McDonald's? You know, they got the whole soda fountain there. Why would anybody want a Diet Coke to go with their McDonald's? Why? You're at McDonald's. You've already thrown in the towel. You're, you, you know, or this is like your, your cheat meal or whatever. You know, nobody's going to McDonald's and having any, like, false perception that they might actually do something good for themselves. Even the people that get, like, a side salad or whatever, or those little fucking cups of apples or, 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 or whatever those things are, uh, even they know they're at McDonald's. And they're like, this, this fucking train went off the rails. But there's always Diet Coke. So I'll just drink a Diet Coke, and uh, I should be... I should be pretty okay. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll be fine with a diet coke, you know? That's that's where shit gets out of hand because this is where you start to see things like, okay, you want to measure um nobody's losing weight on drinking diet coke. Nobody. It results in higher rates of obesity, higher rates of um metabolic syndrome, aka diabetes. It's a uh, higher rate of high blood pressure chances of stroke i mean this these are you know this is from a variety of uh of studies that can be found uh out there you know uh and also keep in mind too that one of the things that happens when you when you consume aspartame as an artificial sweetener see here's here's the thing that really fucking chaps my hide about the paleo and the keto community when they start talking about something like fruit they're like oh my god fruit it has fruit sugar it has fructose and you know where fructose comes from bing 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 high fructose corn syrup duh it's all the same thing the high fructose corn syrup that you find in a coca-cola is the same fructose that you're gonna find in an apple or a pear or a box of strawberries they want you to believe that shit so they can push you their fucking paleo keto garbage it's not true dude okay when you eat sugar that comes in the form of fruit i.e fructose your body actually responds in a very natural way your body actually uses the sugar and it gets pretty much 
poured into your bloodstream very, very slowly, much slower than uh, like high fructose corn syrup to the point where you can actually help treat your diabetes by eating more fruit. This is laid out in, uh, in several studies. So, uh, so when your body takes in sugar, your body can handle sugar as long as it comes from something like fruit. Body's like, yeah, bring on the sucrose, bring on the sugar, bring on the fructose. I'm down. I'm down, son. I don't know about sucrose, but definitely fructose. It's like, bring on the fructose, dog. We like that shit. We like that shit. It's good. You get the fiber. You get the polyphenols. You know, it comes with this beautiful package of just good stuff that comes in the fruit, the vitamins, the minerals, all that shit. You know, the fiber, oh, especially the fiber. But that's the beauty of it, is it's the fiber that gets absorbed in your uh, gut that basically slows the processing of sugar from your gut to your bloodstream. <coughs> but when you're taking something like high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup is just a shot, just a fucking nuclear bomb of fructose into your blood sugar. And in usually the case... Because most high fructose corn syrup is put in things like, again, soda, candy bars, candy, fucking cakes, ice cream, all this shit. There's no fiber to soak it up. So it goes into your bloodstream and just wreaks motherfucking havoc, right? Same thing with the artificial sweeteners, okay? Artificial sweeteners have a very uh, um, similar thing, whereas you don't get the physiological um uh, you don't get the physiological uh, spike of insulin from an uh, artificial sweetener, but what you get is the aspartame crossing the blood-brain barrier, um, crossing the blood-brain barrier in the form of phenylalanine, 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 um, and uh, and then basically what happens is your brain is like, oh, shit, son. Yeah, we're getting fed right now. We're getting fed like a motherfucker. But there's no nutrients that go along with that shot of sweetness that's in your brain. So what does your body do? Your body doesn't, doesn't just go, oh, yeah, this is fucking cool, man. This is holding us over. Your body goes, no, man, get those goddamn nutrients. This shot of sweetness is usually followed by all these nutrients, you know? So um, we're going to send a little uh, message down to the stomach that's going to make you think that we're hungry. Probably not hungry, but we're going to send a message down to your gut that says, look, dude, we're hungry. So if you can pick us up some Grubhub or some, you know, some Chinese food or if you want to whip up something in the microwave... You know, I, I get it. It's we're drinking Diet Coke. So let's try to stay lean if we have like a lean cuisine or something, you know, or some low fat ramen. That would be fantastic. And so what do you do? You start whipping up all this garbage food. You start manifesting and getting all this garbage food in you. And then you induce overeating. You induce uh, not just overeating, but usually eating starchy garbage, you know, fucking high carbohydrate bullshit or high fat shit laden in all kinds of trans fat and hydrogenated oils, you know, fucking, you know, shit meat and shit chicken and uh, all that stuff, you know. This is the trick that aspartame plays on your brain, dude. Um, so, yeah, so it's not like it, this idea of, like, Diet Coke – helping you to lose weight. I mean, bro, you have to just let it go, you know? Not to mention all the other stuff that it's doing to different parts of your body, you know? Harvard researchers found long-term diet soda drinking causes a 30% greater reduction in kidney function. Um, and this is a, uh, this actually comes out of the, I believe the nurse's health study, which is just like a long-term epidemiological study, which I think has been going on for 20, 30 years they just follow these people around and, you know, they ask them questions and then they, you know, they write like, you know, what's been going on in their life, what they've been eating. Are they even still alive? What kind of medical problems they had? And, uh, you know, in this study found to be that uh, um, the people who were drinking uh, diet sodas had a 30 percent 
greater reduction in kidney function, 30% greater deduction in kidney function, and then, of course, all the other stuff we talked about. By the way, in case you're wondering, like, do I need my kidneys? Yeah, you absolutely need your kidneys. You don't have your kidneys. Uh, good luck fucking ingesting any kind of calories of any sort, no matter if it's good or bad. Fucking celery stick will wreck your life, son. Um, so, yeah. So your, your good old Diet Coke is, uh, is ruining your life, man, you know? Especially if you're somebody, I know there's people out there who fall into this, if you're suffering from something like depression or if you've got weight issues or you've got, you know, you're starting to kind of creep into that diabetes, uh, you got pre-diabetes or you're starting to kind of get into pre-diabetes, you're getting into pre-diabetes. How do I get into diabetes, man? I hear it's, I hear it's all the rage now. Uh, Diet Coke is not doing you any favors, man. It's ruining your freaking life. And you gotta, you gotta let it go. You really do. You know, fucking. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this thing where I say, don't drink diet coke. You know, if you're gonna drink diet coke, just drink regular coke. I'm not gonna tell you to do that. That would be irresponsible on my part. Um, however, if you are a soda drinker, uh, and you're like, I don't give a fuck, or you're like, I just want, I just need to have a soda with my dinner, then, god damn it, just drink a coke. I don't want to tell you to drink a Coke. I'm not telling you that Coke is good to drink. But if you're like, man, I just, I'm drinking Diet Coke against my will. I'd much rather drink a Coke than just drink a Coke. You're doing, you're doing the same amount of damage. You know, you might even do, be doing more damage with the Diet Coke. At least with the regular Coke, you'll enjoy it. You'll get those shots of dopamine. That might make you feel a little bit better so you don't have to deal with the depression side of things. Although, boy, I'm telling you, high fructose corn syrup, really, really not a good call. Learn how to drink water, dude. Just just drink freaking water. It's delicious. Water is so good. I get it. You might not like water. It's fine. It's oddly enough an acquired taste despite the fact that 60% of your body is made from water. You have to learn how to drink it. Oh my God, you got to drink water, dude. And you got to drink good water. You can't drink, you can't drink this bottled bullshit. You know, I mean, don't even get me started on what's potentially floating around in the bottled bullshit. You know, talk about, you know, bad stuff going in your body. Think about actual plastic going into your body. That's, that's usually the case. What happens when you're drinking, uh, like bottled water. Um, you know, if you need to wean off a diet Coke, Move to seltzer. Seltzer and lemon is a very refreshing drink. If you're like, I need a soda with my dinner, I need a soda with my lunch. I'm telling you, man, you'll you'll find you'll get good mileage out of a seltzer with lemon. But just drink water, and also um, for better digestion, for for increased digestion, uh, don't drink anything with your lunch or dinner. Don't drink while you eat. Okay, this is this is such an easy lesson that we teach nobody in this country. That actually, uh, I learned from a chiropractor. I learned through a, like ancient Chinese medicine, which is if you're eating something, essentially part of your you know stomach function is that your your stomach breaks down that food. How does your stomach break down that food, Eric? Well, believe it or not. Your gut releases something called, uh, you have a valve in your gut that releases a chemical known as hydrochloric acid. Yeah, hydrochloric acid. I believe that's battery acid. But crazy enough, you make it in your body. You make it right there in your body. It's fucking insane. It's stomach acid. You ever uh, like cough up some of that, you know, like you, you ate too much, you have like heartburn, and then you cough something up? and then that just burns the back of your throat, that's hydrochloric acid, dude. That's fucking battery acid just burning your, your esophagus. That's in your gut. And if you drink fluid while you're eating, or even just after you're done eating, you basically, um, uh, you basically oversaturate the fluid in your body, and the hydrochloric acid can't properly break down the food that you're trying to digest. So what happens is this is where you start getting um, uh, digestion problems, start getting constipation, start getting things like uh, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis. So 
if your addiction to Diet Coke or Coke or any drink is a thing that you do because it's you need to have it while you eat, I'm telling you, dude, just take my advice and don't drink anything. Don't drink anything 15 minutes before you eat. Don't drink anything a half hour to an hour after you eat. And watch how your digestion improves. And if you're going to drink something, just sip water, man. Believe me, your whole life will turn around if you're properly hydrated. And all that sugary bullshit is doing is dehydrating you. Okay, so we are going to uh, get moving here. I'm going to wrap up this episode. Thank you for listening. I hope you took something away. I am dying to know your thoughts. Um, what do you think about Diet Coke? Are you a Diet Coke drinker? What is the, you know, what, what is your take on Diet Coke versus regular Coke, sugary drinks, aspartame? Have you had any adverse effects or reactions that you can link to aspartame? Do you have any adverse uh, dietary reactions that you think after hearing this maybe might be related to aspartame uh, or diet soda? Let me know. Shoot me something on the socials, at Holistic A-Hole, across the board. Find me there, son or lady or whoever you are. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review, a dope review on iTunes. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys and ladies enjoyed the episode. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.